In this video, I'm going to analyze the show Unidentified Inside America's UFO Investigation, Episode 2. One aspect of the USS Nimitz event that makes it so extremely difficult for debunkers to debunk is the fact that this event was actually a series of events. The first time that the bizarre radar tracks were noticed was on November 10th, four days prior to David Fravor intercepting the UAP. They were first noticed by radar specialist Kevin Day, and he conveyed that it looked as if snowflakes were falling on his radar screen. According to Day, one of the objects at 28,000 feet descended to the surface of the ocean in 0.78 seconds, which calculates to 24,000 miles per hour. Furthermore, Day says at one point it was raining UFOs. Now I want to explore the nature and implications of the UFO cover-up, which episode two of Unidentified paints a very broad picture of and gives us a lot of details regarding that cover-up. A cover-up that unfortunately, I think every single American citizen is a victim of. Gary Voorhees, a radar operator that served alongside Kevin Day, conveyed that sonar technicians told him that there was a hit of an object that plunged into the ocean. So I have a question. Why is it that an unidentified object plunged into the ocean in a tightly controlled, restricted military arena and nobody within the American public was told about it? Look what made the headlines back in 2012. Silent running, Russian attack submarine sailed in Gulf of Mexico undetected for weeks, U.S. officials say. A Russian nuclear-powered submarine armed with long-range cruise missiles operated undetected in the Gulf of Mexico for several weeks and its travel in strategic U.S. waters was only confirmed after it left the region. The Washington Free Beacon has learned. It is only the second time since 2009 that a Russian attack submarine has patrolled so close to U.S. shores. The stealth underwater incursion in the Gulf took place at the same time Russian strategic bombers made incursions into restricted U.S. airspace near Alaska and California in June and July, and highlights a growing military assertiveness by Moscow. How about this 2016 news report reporting that a Russian fighter jet buzzed a U.S. ship? We're just getting in these really very disturbing, incredible images, the video of Russian warplanes buzzing a U.S. Uh, U.S. Navy destroyer, the USS Cook, in international waters in the Baltic Sea. Uh, you served as a, a pilot uh, in the U.S. Air Force. How dangerous is this kind of situation where these fighter jets actually come within 75 feet of the Cook? Yeah, it's very dangerous. Now, I realize these are huge stories, and that's why they were reported on. But what about an object plunging into the ocean in a highly restricted military controlled arena comprising of a carrier strike group not far off the coast of San Diego and this object that plunged into the ocean is capable and did travel at 70 knots twice the speed of the fastest United States submarine. Is that not newsworthy? The reason we don't regularly hear about the UFO incursions that happen very frequently to Department of Defense properties is because there is indeed a UFO cover-up <clears throat> that manifests on a variety of levels, including stigma, but that would just be one of those levels. Thank God this is shifting right now. In addition to the sonar hit of the submerged object, Gary Voorhees relays that a mysterious helicopter landed on the Princeton. Personnel came off and asked of him to be given anything that was recorded during the UFO event. And the personnel went even further than that and said, look, if anything wasn't recorded on during the UFO event, I want you to erase it and they provided absolutely no explanation to Voorhees why they wanted this done. Chris Mellon asks Voorhees, How unusual was this request to destroy and erase this data? Voorhees responds, It was completely unprecedented. I've never been asked to destroy data ever. Voorhees was not the only one to encounter an extremely strange scenario regarding the radar data during the UFO event series. Kevin Day tried to document the UFO intercept. So he looked into the ship's computers to get the radar data as well as the communication recordings. But when he attempted to do that, 
he realized that that data was gone, and according to Day, that's not even supposed to be possible. Day relays. Either someone took the old disk and replaced it, or somehow it was actually erased. The narrator conveys, Former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence Chris Mellon has tried to track down the records from the Nimitz fleet for that week. And then Chris Mellon conveys, One of the frustrating but very intriguing things about this is when I suggested to someone on the Hill that they try to attain the deck logs for the Princeton for that date, the National Archive said, the Princeton logs for that date are missing. Those deck logs should be there, and we know officially now that they're not, and it's not due to classification. Really unfortunate, because had they had been there, that may have been another way to corroborate some of these reports. So what conclusions might this data leave us with? One, the mainstream media is not reporting on UFO incursions that happen extremely frequently to DOD property because they do not find out about it. But everyone will learn when a Russian sub enters the Gulf of Mexico or when a Russian fighter buzzes a warship. Two, some entity within the United States removes data documenting UFO incursions, not only from the origin source, but from the National Archive as well. Three, the U.S. Navy is complicit in the UFO cover-up. There is no way any of the data could have been removed from the carrier strike group unless the captain gave the okay. So who the hell is behind these shenanigans? Well, I strongly suspect it's a UFO program or programs that is responsible for studying UFO data, but also is responsible for ensuring that the knowledge of the UFO presence is contained. Quite frankly, if there is a program that ensures knowledge of the UFO presence is contained, this is an egregious waste of American tax dollars. I mean, imagine having a program to ensure that the knowledge of meteorite, meteorites falling from the sky is contained. These UFOs are a part of our universe. If there is a program being paid to keep it on the down low, that is beyond absurd. And frankly, I have no choice but to highly suspect that such a program exists based upon some of the things that happened during the USS Nimitz UFO event series and based upon some of the things I've read about how the UFO situation unfolded during the past 72 year history. Now, why would a special access program within the United States government want the communication and data logs from the USS Nimitz UFO event series? Why would they go to such trouble to get that information off the USS Nimitz? Well, the answer to that question can actually be found in episode two of Unidentified. The following is a statement that was created for a briefing to be presented to senior defense officials of the United States government. The science exists for an enemy of the United States to deliver a weapon virtually anywhere on the planet and any time without detection or interdiction using camouflage, virtually instantaneous acceleration and maneuvering, jamming, little to no detectable signatures. In other words, anyone able to duplicate this kind of technology rules the world. So what may have occurred is a UFO special access program got on the USS Nimitz to retrieve the communication and data logs because those could provide puzzle pieces to better understanding UFO technology and could aid them in their efforts to back engineer the technology. Believe it or not, the greatest threat regarding this UFO presence does not come from the UFOs themselves. It actually comes from the potential that a US adversary will be able to figure out how exactly these objects work and then create their own UFOs. And by virtue of that technology, they will have complete military superiority over the entire globe. I know that my last statement is going to get misinterpreted. So let me clarify for the record. Any nation will view their adversary duplicating UFO technology to be an extreme threat to their security. Moreover, it can easily be argued any nation having UFO technology is a threat to overall world stability, huge imbalance of technological capabilities. Please do not forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my merch shop where I sell t-shirts. Link is in the description below. Or you can even become a patron. Or you can just slap a like on this bad boy and I'll appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. episode.